Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've been asked to talk about the E4 Project Information and Documentation Service. Um, I'm hard pressed to do this in 30 minutes, so I'm going to sort of go through the slides fairly, fairly uh, succinctly and um, I'll deal with questions after the presentation. Um, just want to introduce myself quickly, although I have been introduced. My name is Louis Stockberg. I'm, I'm a director in Project Management, which was founded in 1979. And um, so I've been taxed with inf information issues for the last 33 years. And eventually I decided to do something. I sort of quickly cover some of the foundational issues underlying the design of the system because that's important to actually understand what the system does for you. So before we sort of dive into the system itself, I just want to say that even if you don't believe in the advantages of tight documentation management on a project management basis, um, then at least take heed of this truism. That documentation management is like a seatbelt. You don't need it till you crash. Over the last 400 projects, I've noticed recurring information flow issues, lost information, late information issue, information not received, Disputed date stamping. But I issued the drawing syndrome. And this system that I'm about to describe to you, and I notice that the screen is fairly low, I don't know if people at the back can actually see, see the bottom of the screen. So I'll read it out for you. This is just my response to these particular challenges. So if any of these particular buttons touch a nerve in your own experience in the construction industry, and that is what I've experienced certainly during the last 30 years. I just want to quickly stop and have a look at the Ndjaka uh, River Bridge accident. This, this occurred a few years ago in Kumaronga. That was the accident, but the aftermath is interesting. A 700 Ndjaka report by the Department of Labor resulted in a four year inquiry constituting 26,000 pages of evidence costing 100 million rand. So when things go wrong, finding the paperwork, analyzing the paperwork, deciphering <coughs> the paperwork is relevant. The system aims to provide an effective and efficient information flow, provide speedy information flow. Process, <coughs> the process must leave an audit trail. Uh, it must provide easy access to information. It must be affordable. And the affordable issue is actually more relevant than it sounds because we've done some research and you probably will only ever look at under 4% of all of the documentation that goes into a project more than once. And it must be a secure story in an archive here. Now, in legal disputes, which is the one place where you do pull out all the paperwork, must deliver every relevant document. You know Murphy's Law, you'll find 99% of the documents and the one that really changes the story is the one that's missing. So you've got to be able to find every document. It must tell the story through paperwork. Yes, it is true that what you said happened is influential, but at the end of the day, what really counts is what's on paper. It must reduce the cost of the legal process. And I'm not now trying to take work away from all the attorneys in the audience, but the discovery process is a large part of the cost of, of a legal case. So it must facilitate your fingers doing the talking. Okay. However, in construction, in general sense, information must be accurate and precise. It must be issued on time must be issued to the right people, it must leave an audit trail, it must be stored for at least 10 years, and you know, as, as simple as that little list appears to be, it very seldom is actually achieved. So current practice, um, let me just ask a few proverbial questions. You know, why don't we file documents? The answer is fairly simple. Boredom, time and effort. It's a terrible job. 
and it's normally delegated, because it's such a terrible job, it's delegated down the line. Why do we lose documents? Because the finding logic differs from the filing logic. So when you file in a document three years earlier than when you're looking for it, your brain is in a completely different space. <clears throat> and what percentage do we ever refer to more than once? Approximately 4%. And that might not be true of bills of quantities and certain drawings, but I'm just talking about the total documentation package. So where do we normally file? Sort of in file 13. Every document has a DNA. Who issued it? Who received it? The date and issue, circulation, version or revision control, and then certain keywords on the document. And that's really the DNA of the document. The, the last point about the system is why do systems generally not work? The lady from the Productivity Institute actually mentioned that complexity is the real killer. Okay? Most of these systems are much too complex. You've got to design a system which is easy enough to implement. Easy systems, people are nervous about easy systems or cheap systems because they sort of don't seem as good as the expensive ones. But simplicity is absolutely critical. Capturing only a percentage of the documents is no good. You've got to capture everything. Speed or the lack thereof, trust of the system, not foolproof, or some of the key issues as to why systems don't work. Now, typical problems. Architect produces a drawing. This is actually a real case. Architect produces a drawing. The issue slip and drawing is, is <coughs> sent to the contractor who signs it some three days after the issue slip is written. The contractor retrieves drawings and signs the issue slip, as I say, some days later. And the contractor date stamps the drawing some four or five days later than that. So if you look at this overall time frame, from the time the first attempt at an issue slip starts to the time it, the drawing is date stamped, it could be five or six days. Now, I was involved in a dispute around this very issue. It took a, a sort of a, nearly said a bunch, a group of seriously high-powered lawyers, two years to debate as to when was the drawing actually issued. I think the legal fees around resolving this issue cost something like 26 million rand. But there were other issues. Issue slips weren't correct. They were unsigned. And then the proverbial question, in that array, which date actually applies? So I just want to describe the system architecture to you very quickly. It starts off with an information library. And the principle behind it is that everything gets issued into the library and then withdrawn out of the library. Nothing gets issued directly between the parties. So the design team will issue into the library and their co-peers in the design team will extract out of the library. And when that happens, the system date stamps the document. The project manager can now, principal manager, project manager, principal agent, can now watch those information movements. So you can remotely actually see this information moving in and out of the project. And at a point in time, that information must be issued to a contractor either through a printing outlet or he downloads it directly from the system. And once again, the system date stamps the, system date stamps the document. So by creating an information library, that's the point at which the system creates the audit trail. And it's really as simple as that. The most important thing, and for some people who can't read it, let me just the most important thing about this whole idea is that the date, the date stamping by the system dictates when the document is issued, not the date on the document. And that is written contractually into the process. So a letter dated the 3rd of April actually issued to the system on the 7th of April is actually issued on the 7th of April. 
just very quickly, it's a, it's a project library that houses the information electronically, which is very similar to, by the way, many FTP sites, except you'll see now that it's got a few more modules to it. Um, it houses the information electronically. The document store can't be altered by anybody. No information is ever overwritten, so every revision is retained. So if you want to cut a point in time, if you cut it, it'll tell you which revision was active at the 8th of January 2001. Um, which email had actually been issued and which had not been issued at that date. So nothing is ever overwritten. Key rules that are applied at a project management level are, if it's not in the system, it doesn't exist, so never refer to it. If it is on the system, it's issued and you've read it. And the date of the document is the date it enters the system, no other date. The system comprises four modules. A drawing document, a drawing and key document register, an email repository, an action register, and an electronic tender vault. So those are the four basic modules. Let me just quickly tell you about the drawing register. It stores every single document, including every revision. So on an on a biggish project, it will store eight or 9,000 drawings. It stores every revision to every drawing, and, and it thereby creates the history of every drawing. It, it date and time stamps every document, and it relies retrieval of that document 24-7 from anywhere in the world. So you can be an architect working in Dubai and issuing drawings into the system, and it's date stamping it on an international clock and you can load new revisions from anywhere in the world 24-7. And it has powerful search retreat. Why does it have powerful search retreat? Because we will file bad. It's a given. I can create as many folders as you like, you're going to file badly. So we need to find those documents that went off to the wrong place somehow. Um, um, and therefore, as I've said, it's, it must be easy to recreate what documents were alive at any given point in time. I just want to explain what, how simple it is to load a drawing, because this is where I think the system starts to come into its own, relative to an FTP site. You, you compile the project folders, this is effectively the drawing register that an architect would normally use, or, or any professional. You click on a folder and ask to insert a document. A folder is a drawing. So site plan, you click on site plan, you say I want to insert a drawing. The system emails you a coded email, you attach, you reply to the email, you attach the document. There's a project management approval process which is optional, and if he approves it, it goes into the right folder as a new revision. That's it. If you want to retrieve a drawing, you log on, you view the register, you select the document and the system emails you the document. So it doesn't require any special software, any understanding of FTP terminal, uh, uh, protocols, etc. It just uses straight email. Where do documents are very big, you can up and down load them uh, as you would an FTP site. The email register is actually very simple. You just copy the email to the system, it stores it, it records the history. It allows retrieval, it retains privacy, only the people that were originally copied on the email can see it. Um, it has powerful search routines because once again, what, the way you find the email isn't in a folder. You search on keywords and, the, and using that DNA that I explained to you. Email register, same thing. Copy the email to the system, stores it, you search for it, and it emails you the document. The action register, every query or request for action is recorded. Um, so it, it records the history of every question between the professional team and the, and, and the professional team and or the contractor. It warns, you put in a due date, I want something by a date. It sends an email to both parties saying, Joseph wants this from you by that given date. And on that given date, it starts to warn you by emails to say that you are late for that issue. It will also draw a curve of your overall performance as to how well you did in terms of answering the action items. 
not against your land. Um, once again, research routines, it revolutionizes accountability. We, on a project management level, we use the action register as the agenda to our meetings. That's it. That's all we worry about. Are there ac open action items? So meetings that used to take us three and a half hours now take us 20 minutes. And action is no longer controlled at meetings. It's not, have you done it? I know whether you've done it or not. The items are either open or closed. I don't need to ask you whether you've done it. It's done. It's all it's not done. Okay, so you, you create an action item. You identify a recipient. You state a due date. You detail the nature of the action required, i.e. I want to draw it from you, Mr. Architect. And submit the action to the system. The system then takes over and sends an email to both parties. On the due date, it starts sending out reminders. And in the interim, it compiles a log of every single action that has happened. And it tells you how well you're doing. So I can tell you that on average, you have received 400 action items and you've answered them on average one and a half days after the due date. So keeping tabs remotely on a project now becomes a bit easier as I'm now talking with a sort of project manager's hat on. You enter the system, you select a date range, for example yesterday, you have a look at all the drawings that moved in and out of the system yesterday, you look at all the questions and answers, so somebody says can I move the building one meter left, that's an item you're going to react to. And, um, <laughs> And you, can, and you can see the emails that have gone between the parties. The system has a couple of other little things, like an, an array of keywords, and it rates your emails for you. So if that particular email has delay, accident, da da da, it counts up how many words in the text of the email um, correspond with danger words that we've put in the array, and it will <coughs> suggest that you read this email first. The tender vault. Tender Vault is open for each tender. Um, each t a, a series of tenderers are logged on against that particular tender. The system sends out a coded email to, to each of the tenderers. They merely reply to that email, attach their tender um, and any qualifications that they have to the tender. The vault remains closed and cannot be interfered with by anybody until the opening date of the vault. So, so if you submit your tender, one of the problems with email at the moment is if you're doing an electronic tender and you send it one minute early, you never really know whether someone has got your number and just passed it on to his mate and his mate comes in with a tender 30 seconds later, a few rand below yours. That can't happen. The tender vault stays closed and on a given time it opens and then you can retrieve the information out of the tender. So same process, create the tender vault, the system sends out a coded email to the tenderers, the tender applies with an attachment, and the system unlocks on a given time. And that's it. I, I think I've actually dealt with the features of the tender system, so I'm not going to go through it in detail. Um, I'll just run through them, because I've, I think I've said each of you know, the stuff's confidential and there's an audit trail. The system cannot be manipulated. Um, so the process is corruption free. Um, it doesn't get rid of uh, the, the party that happened the night before, the collusion party that happened the night before, but at least the actual tender process is clear. So just in general, the system as a whole improves transparency. Anyone can look into the project at any point in time, including the client, and see exactly what is moving around, what questions are being asked. Provides a window into the project, which is more or less what I'm saying. It allows that access 24-7. They're powerful search routines. Project governance is substantially improved. So you can, if the, if the STP folder is empty, but there's a site set of site handover minutes going into the site handover minute folder. It's going to ask, well, I'll be handing over site without an approved SDP. 
audit trials are improved, disbursements cost are substantially reduced. We did a project recently where on one project, a fairly large project, the overall disbursements budget reduced by about 350,000. Just in a number of people in the team that no longer printed every drawing. And facilities management records are kept on the system and are easy to access and find. Um, this is just a continuation. There's, there's an instant view for the project manager of the information movements. You're exposed to all the questions and answers. Forensic analysis is improved. Critical notif notifications like clause 29.43 and 4.5 are date stamped by the system. There's no debate anymore about whether it's morning, afternoon, after 12, under 12. All of that stuff is just removed. Um, it improves design coordination. It substantially reduces administration and provides you an absolutely indisputable accurate register and accurate version control. And then, not, in, not irrelevant, to provide you with a good backup system. You don't need containers of paper because um, the system is adequately backed up. You can rely on the system. <coughs> I just want to, I have been asked by Cliff specifically just to give you an indication of what the costs are. Equal is a total system. In other words, everything I've described is 295 Rand per project per month per user. That's exact. A tender volt is 295 Rand per volt, which is irrespective of how many tenderers have access to the system. So you don't pay per tenderer. So it's just a flat rate of 295. You get the tender volt inside the equal system under normal circumstances. Cancellation, there's no cancellation fee or penalty. It's a pay as you go in effect. So you don't sign up to a system and then you don't like it. If you don't like it, you stop it. If you've got 10 users at one point, and then you go down to three users, you delete seven users and you only pay for three. You just pay for what you use. And post-contract, uh, data can be kept alive by just one person being a subscriber, and he accesses information, like a facility manager, for example. So effectively, you can keep the, the system open at 295 Rand a month. Registration, we register the project and thereafter you have control as to how many users you want to put on and off the system. In summary, I think it's affordable, it's easy to use. We, we train people in five minutes overseas on a telephone call to use the system. I've never heard from them again, but they're still on the system. Um, it's secure, it's a, it's a serious project management aid. You know, I have sort of come out of that camp, so that's where my... Um, it's a risk reduction system in the sense that if it does go wrong, you will find the documents. And it's useful to every level of the construction industry, including subcontractors. It requires no special software or complicated licenses. And it's battle-tested. It's been used for about six years in a slightly different version, over probably about 80 or 90 projects now with literally millions of documents going onto the system, and in that time it's had a three minute downtime over the, over the period. Just want to, I, I, I was going to run it live, but I know Murphy's watching me, so I did a, a quick, and I literally just want to give you an idea of what the user face looks like. The sign on, you know, typical, you put a username and password to extract the document, Go to the document register, select the project, select the document. Uh, trust me to take the very bottom one where 90% of the audience can't see the error, but believe me, it's down there. I select a document. Under that document, there are four revisions. One, two, three, five, five revisions. I, I want the, the first document that went into the system. You see it numbers at rev, rev one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, I also pushed the... Okay, I'm not going to try and go back. And if you go into that, in that particular document, it just gives you the detail of the document. You decide that you want the document, you ask for email document, and it sends it to you. So that's typically the user interface. 
you, you select who you want to send it to. So as a project manager, I might not only be sending it to myself, I might be sending it to a broader array of people in the team. I push send and it emails it to me and it confirms success of the transaction. And that's the email that comes through with an attachment to it, which is the drawing on it. To insert a new revision, it's exactly the same process. I just go to the plus button and I insert my, my author revision because the author revision and the system revision might be different because as an architect you might have done some revisions that you didn't put on the system. So you might be on Rev 6 where the system's on Rev 2. So you put your author revision, you, you select the file you want to put a comment, you know, updating the access road, the purpose of the drawing is for design, it's a plan, it's for information, it's got an outer security level so anyone can read it. It's an A1 drawing for printing purposes and it sends me a coded email. I reply to that email, attach the drawing and send. The action register is exactly the same protocol. You go to the action register, you go to the plus button and you enter an action item. In this instance, I'm creating an action item to myself, um, which is not usual. Um, this is reinforcing layout level 3, section 1, for example. Uh, the due date is the 31st of the 3rd, 2012. Uh, please submit reinforcing layouts for that particular level. I push send and it creates the action item. And that's the action item that it sends you. So just an email with, with that detail. Uh, how am I doing time-wise there? And then it sends you, um, I just want to make sure I don't push two buttons, it sends you a daily report in which it says, against my name there are seven action items, two of them are open, in other words I require, they still require my attention. Um, I've received one reply to an action item I created, um, and I've created two action items, and at the bottom of the screen is the actual detail of the open action items that I must respond to. And it sends that to me daily to remind me of what my status is on action items. So I, no longer is it tolerable to wait until the day before the meeting to try and deal with your to-do list, because the system's going to hound you. This particular system doesn't yet do it, but we will eventually build in a thing that beyond the critical data will start sending you SMS. Tenderbolt, exactly the same process. Go to Tenderbolt. In this instance, there are three tenders, three prototype tenders that I've created. Okay. Um, if I enter that bottom tender, which is the aluminium tender, these are all just set up for demonstration purposes, by the way. If I go into the aluminium tender, you'll see that I've received two tenders, tender one and tender two. It's allowing me in there because we've passed the open, open the vault time, and I want to send the tenders to myself. I click on view. It gives me the details of the tender. I push email, and it sends me the tender. So every single module operates on exactly the same process. And lastly, if I go to the email repository, a whole lot of emails. If I click on an email, it, I can send it to myself or to others. In this particular instance, this email says site handover will be on the 29th of the 3rd. Email the attachment and it sends the attachment. And that's the being the all end of the e system. Thank you.